Welcome to Beyond the Sheets is presented by Parasite Systems. I am on the phone today with Mr. Sam Swearingen. Sam, where are you sitting and what do you got going on? Well, I'm sitting in a camper in the beautiful state of Alabama. Alabama. What's the weather like down there? Um, perfect, actually. It's going to be <laughs> a high of 75 today. Yeah. And uh, high of 75, nice. That's perfect kind of weather. So good sun tan, sun tanning weather. You're going to go out and uh, put a little sun, t- uh, get a little sun tan today, are you? Uh, I, I'll, I'll go out, but, you know, probably the only thing to get any sun is my face. It is your face. Going to wear a hat, going to keep everything protected. And that's yeah. good. That makes sense, Sam. That makes sense. And for our listeners, of course, reintroducing my co-host, uh, our co-host on the show, BTC, Beyond the Shoots, uh, Mr. Sam Swearingen, two times North America Rodeo Commission Salabronc Rider, world champion. Um, so we're going we're gonna to catch up, Sam. It has been a long time since we spoke. Last time we were together uh, was at the IFR in Guthrie, Oklahoma. And I know we did a recap show, but does anything over this time, does anything stand out for you uh, about the IFR? Um, I just really like the direction they're going in. It, it just seems to be growing and building. Uh, the IPRA has had some issues over the past years, but it seems like they're turning everything around and going the right direction. Absolutely. And we had so much fun down there. Dale Yerrigan and crew, what a great job they did hosting us. It was great to see Sylvain Bourgeois, of course, Wild Time Productions and and BJ Prince. Um, And we're going to be getting an update from BJ here in a bit uh, about what's going on in Canada, what IPRA Canada is looking like these days, his rodeo schedule, uh, the season, how it's shaping up, and, of course, St. Teat, Sam. Uh, this will be their 61st year. Wow. That, that's pretty cool to be way up north in Quebec and been going on 61 years. That's, that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, um, of course we, we, you know, we've been releasing some Rawhide Ranch recordings and the most recent one that came out, uh, Mike, your brother, of course, uh, Gary Sicoria, Dave Mentier, Daryl Lane, they all talked about going to St. Tite. Before I jump ahead, though, got to tell you, Sam, I've been busy. OK, I've uh, been doing race car updates. So kind of like your rodeo business, you know, you got all winter, you do all your planning and then you start to put together the schedule where you start to put together in racing, you start to put together upgrade for your cars. Um, and I've got a couple big upgrades that are coming that I'm really excited about. Um, um, upgraded my suspension, brand new BC coilovers. They are race tuned. Um, by Redshift out of Pennsylvania, they they modified them, so we're going to have a lot of fun with the new suspension. Of course, got the wing, and then I've got a big brake kit that's coming in from Fast Brakes out of Arizona. So those should be here next week. Um, and then, Sam, I think our first event is we're looking at is like mid-April. I'll get on the track. So it feels like I'm right on course for the little Toyota Celica. Well, Doug, do me a favor. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Put that race kit on, uh, brake kit on first, because uh, <laughs> we know that uh, you've had some issues in that department uh, before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was only a compression fracture of my spine. It wasn't a complete break, Sam. Um, oh. And thank goodness for the tire wall at Watkins Glen. But you're exactly right. Is this a year that uh, that you're going to come out and ride with me? And more importantly, is this a year that we get you behind the wheel at the racetrack? Well. I think I'd probably rather be behind the wheel than sitting in that passenger seat. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, they they probably pass me like I'm backing up, but uh, it, it it'd be fun. We'll we'll see where it takes us. We'll see where it takes us. Okay, all right. Um, this is a point where I usually ask you, how is Dalen? You know, what's going on? How is he feeling? And you know what? I thought we'd do something different today, Sam. If it's all right. I thought we'd call Dalen and get it directly from him. What do you think? Well, I always love talking to my son. I do it quite often, so that'll be great. It's much better first-hand than second-hand. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. 
How's it going today? <laughs> it's going good, Dalen. How are you, sir? Oh, doing good, doing good. Well, we appreciate you taking some time uh, to have our uh, to have a conversation with us here. You're on the phone with your dad, by the way. Hello, Dalen. Hey, Dad. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Oh, doing good. <laughs> well, we're recording an update. We always start off by me asking, how's Dalen? And today I thought, you know what? We'll just call Dalen and find out how he's feeling. How are you feeling, Dalen? How are things? Well, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm a little sore. I'm actually uh, made the decision this morning to uh, take this weekend off and um, kind of having let my shoulder rest up a little bit, uh, kind of uh, let my the nerve rest in the shoulder and, and feel better for uh, Albuquerque. Okay, okay, so Albuquerque is going to be a master's, right? Or a, a major, I should say. Um, a major, yeah. Yeah, how's how's your groin? How's your wrist? How's everything else? Oh, yeah, the rest of my body feels really good. My I've been definitely working through uh, my hip hip workouts. And, and if I when I stay on them, uh, everything, everything feels good. So I've just been staying on them, and my hip's feeling good. The only thing that's kind of bothering me is my shoulder a little bit. Uh, and I think by Albuquerque, it'll be ready to rock and roll. Okay, perfect. And are you still doing yoga? Still doing a little bit of yoga. Yep. No, I'm not doing it. I'm here. I need to get back to doing some yoga. But last time I did yoga, I um, I did like day before bull riding, and I was just a little too loose and kind of like strained a few things. So I've just I got to find the happy medium. Oh, okay, okay. Because just so you know, about a month ago, I took a yoga class, first time ever. Last time, probably ever, but uh, it's harder than it looks, dude. Oh yeah, it's definitely a hard. It's definitely pretty, pretty tough deal. It ain't yoga. You, there's so many different styles of yoga and um, power, putting them, putting them all together. And I found it was great for the mind. You know, you focus on breathing, relaxing, but it's it's pretty tough. I mean, that downward facing dog. You got to be in pretty good shape to be able to do that. Oh yeah, that'll wear them shoulders out. So what do you got for projects on the on the ranch? What do you got going? Uh, just trying to get my my yearling bugs and just getting them bugged and uh, just working on building some pens and stuff like that. And finishing touches up on the bunkhouse and other than that, just getting the shoulder feeling back, feeling good again. That's that's number one on the list. The cattle, everything's good. All your horses, everything's going all right. Oh yeah, yes sir, everything. Good. Everybody's loving the spring weather and uh, the green grass that's coming up. And I saw a video of you the other day. You, one, you were out fixing fence, and the other one, you had gotten a pallet full of Monster Energy drink. Oh, yeah. Me and Grandpa, we've been trying a bunch of different flavors of Monster and uh, enjoying it. It sounded like on the video, who's going to stick with the original flavor? Have you figured out which is your top couple flavors oh yeah i like i like them all but my favorite is probably the recovery um it's a recovery drink or it's rehab and it's the wild berry tea and that one's probably one of my top favorites and i also saw you got you a pair of new uh work boots tell us about those oh yeah i got me yeah i've been working in my front work boots um i don't know what style they are uh, but they're the comfiest boots I I uh, wear. I wear them every day. And, um, I, my feet, I can go run a couple miles at the end of the day. Is, what? Now, wait a minute. You work all day. As long as you got your brunt work boots on, and then you can get up and put your shoes on, your running shoes, and go run and feel feel good. Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Okay, okay. And, and knowing your history with your feet, that that really says something. Oh, so yeah. they must be great yeah, boots, huh? Really good boots. Ah, good. When we saw you in uh, in Johnstown, PA, at that PBR event, you had a wonderful haircut. Now I see you're styling just a little bit differently. So describe your haircut, if you would, your current haircut. My sister Deb, right, Simcox and Company. She's always interested. And then I've got a follow up question. So describe your haircut. Me uh, keeping the back of my head warm. And um, now springs a, springs a spring and, and it's 80 degrees about every day now. And I need something that uh, is a little cooler. So I went with, uh, 
I don't really know what you call it. It's long on the top and then faded all around the um, short around the sides. Well, it looks great, by the way. Looks great. That was one of the things I noticed when I saw you on TV the other day. And then the other question I have about your haircut: Do you see a difference in your riding? The, the earlier haircut you had, kind of the mullet thing going on, versus this a little bit more conservative, outside warm weather haircut. Has it made a difference? I don't think it's really made a difference, no. <laughs> not about weight or center of gravity or anything like that? <laughs> no, nothing with the flow or anything like that. I think I, I still got a pretty good flow, and I'm ready to go into Albuquerque next week. I love it. I love it. I got the flow going on. Perfect. I've been following you a little bit online. How can your how can our listeners follow you, Dalen? Well, they can follow me on uh, on Instagram, D underscore uh, Swearingen one. I think that's what it is. Maybe it, not type my full name in, and then it pops up. And uh, then uh, Dalen Swearingen, professional bull rider on uh, Facebook. Excellent, excellent, and I really enjoy the videos. Keep them coming, and I think our listeners are going to enjoy them as well. Sam, Dalen, anything else before we say good day? Well, I, I got a couple things. So uh, now, number one, kind of has your grandfather changed his choice of drink? Uh, that that. Monster must be pretty good if that's the case. Oh, yeah. No, he likes the original monsters. He'll, he'll have one about every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and how are those new bulls settling in? Oh, they're, they're settled in good, and uh, they're doing good. Now, did you did you put the young one out with cows, too, or just the older one? Well, I haven't put anything out with cows yet. I'm kind of just waiting a little, uh, waiting another month or so before I put them out on the cows, just. I uh, don't want to have gain, quite January calves. I want to have February or into February, first of March calves. Just the weather and being around and everything like that. Yeah, in your part of the country, I think March calves are perfect. You know, end of February, first of March, where oh, yeah. the weather is pretty decent yep. and you shouldn't be fighting the mud. It should be good. Well, Dalen, we really appreciate it. Get rested up. Get healed up. Anything you need from us before we say goodbye? No, I appreciate it. And, uh, thank y'all. All right. Good luck. Oh, yeah. Dalen, we will be rooting you on, cheering you on when you get to Albuquerque. All right. Thank y'all. Sam, I got to tell you, uh, there's a great Facebook uh, page out there uh, that we're going to we're going to put in our listener notes. We want to make sure everybody gets out and checks out. It's called the IRA Project. Uh, Mr. Tim Sparks uh, put that together a few years ago. Um, Tim Sparks, of course, saddle bronc rider, uh, and he had the TNT Rodeo Company for nine or ten years, I believe he said. I uh, had an opportunity to sit down with Tim uh, at lunch um, uh, last week, um, as it turns out, he's only about 20 minutes from where I live. He's in the greater Louisville area. I'm in, I'm in Taylorsville, which is about 20 minutes, uh, from where he was actually sitting. So we met, uh, had lunch and I'll tell you what the history this fellow knows, um, the work that he has done to gather up great pictures, uh, great comments on this IRA project. And he's a huge proponent, Sam, of the IPRA Hall of Fame. Um, so I'm not sure where it goes, but um, uh, I'm looking forward to, to sitting with him and, and getting information from him. And uh, we probably do an episode to really pull it all out of him. You know, and the best thing about it, it's in your backyard. Who yeah. would have ever thought, you know, uh, when, when we started doing this and it, it was for the reasons that he is doing it to remember the people that were before us and laid the groundwork. And he, he's right in your backyard. You can go visit him and uh, see what he has laid out for his vision of it. You bet. You bet. And we're going to do that. So he's out. Of, he's he's traveling right now. But when he gets back, I think mid-April or whatever, Tim and I will sit down and we're going to continue our conversation and and like you just said, you know, he's been recording a lot of the history, and that's a good bridge to 
course, the Rawhide Ranch recordings that we recorded when uh, I came up to your place in December, early December. It was, I think, the 12th or 13th I came up there. And, Sam, we put out a bunch of episodes up there. Yeah, we stayed pretty busy, and uh, I my jaw was a little sore from all the talking, but uh, it, it was a great week, and got to go over some of the things with the young and older contestants. So yeah, we, yeah. we kind of filled in the gamut. Boy, didn't we, didn't we? Uh, we started off with the Rawhide Rodeo Company, your experience with that, all the way from starting it to selling it. Uh, that's been a very, very popular episode, Sam. We talked, we put out Rodeo Terms Part 3. Uh, which, if you remember, we just we talked about the rules and the events for all of our listeners. Hopefully, that helps shore up some of their understanding of the sport of rodeo. Uh, we talked with Mr. Pat Tooley, uh, Clarkson Rodeo co- uh, Chairman, and then and then of course Sam, the uh, Rob Wright uh, Horse Equine Cor- chi- Chiropractor. Let me do that again. Rob Wright Equine Chiropractor and the president, chairman of the Attica Rodeo Committee. Yeah, and uh, Dave and Rob and everybody with Attica, it's just such a great event. You know, um, it, it goes on the first weekend of August and first full weekend of August, I should say. And it's kind of my hometown rodeo. Not kind of, it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even though it's 30 minutes away, but uh, that's where I started. And, you know, something that's really near and dear to my heart. You want to see it progress and get even bigger as it is, you know. And like Fred Backless, he probably started there, one of his mainstays also, which we did a program with. You up bet. episode up there with you bet and we did one with dave and dave wheeler and his, and his daughter sandy brewer um and we did one with melanie routenstraw domes and her kids uh, melanie of course grew up in the attica rodeo dave wheeler that episode sam brings me completely full circle of why we started the the podcast beyond the shoots quite frankly if you remember i called you i just had, had seen the New York Rodeo, uh, uh, New York State Rodeo Museum Facebook group page, and I'm like, we know these folks. We got to talk about this. So that's what kicked it all off, Sam. Yeah, and that was our main objective to get the stories from them before they were gone. You bet. And it feels like we're doing that uh, of course not everyone will talk to us because uh whatever but uh, i understand <laughs> yeah yeah well that's gonna happen right uh, and then we recorded as you said with um uh, with michelle and lewis backless that that was such a cool episode sam to catch up learn about fred a lot of us saw fred from afar i had no idea his background and where he had come from and the drive that he had, the motivation that he had to be a rodeo cowboy. Yeah, to do what he did to to compete. And, and from that area in New York or anywhere that isn't rodeo mm-hmm. connected, mm-hmm. you have to have that drive because it's not easy to go learn. You can't drive 20 minutes and be in somebody's indoor arena with practice livestock yeah, um, yeah. i noticed you know out there in texas and oklahoma you can go probably 10 minutes and be somewhere yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. to to do it but up there uh in the north country in the northeast especially you, you have to have the drive and the desire to want to be a cowboy to do this you bet you got to be motivated right and uh, you talk about practice arenas. One of the things that stood out for me, there was a number of things on that show that stood out. But one of the things that stood out for me was riding in the arena with the rocks and using those as motivation. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, Phillips Arena. <laughs> the people that know Ed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he will. He's very quiet, easygoing. 
but he gets his point across. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he is one tough cookie yeah. and he's helped so many, you know, yeah. that was the place where people went to learn. You bet. And uh, he's helped so many and great, greatly appreciative to the help he's given me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it's just wonderful place to go. And, you know, if you want to whine about what you're doing, you better not go there. If you want to better yourself, go see Ed. You bet. You bet. Um, and he's on my list, Sam. We, I'd love to get him on and hear his, his story, right? Those are the, we've got this, we're picking up more and more of the stories of the generation of Mike, and I'll go into it here a little bit. A couple episodes we just recently put out of Mike Swearingen, and your brother, of course, you, that generation, but getting to the generation that started, that started you and Mike, uh, and then who started them? Right back to your connection of how does rodeo get introduced into someone's life in upstate New York, uh, and it's around. I mean, that's what we're seeing in all the episodes. Dave Wheeler said rodeo's been around in in New York State for a hundred years, and we learned that when we sat down with your brother Mike Gary Sicoria. I'd not met Gary, and what a hoot! I mean, what a storyteller! Just great, great stories. Dave Mintier and Daryl Lane. And Gary opens up the first show by talking about going to, was it Edgerton Park in Rochester? Yes, it was. Okay. Uh, and I heard stories of a rodeo in Edgerton, and I don't, you know, I don't know where Rochester, the Edgerton Park is. You know, the city's only 45 minutes from me, but very seldom do I go up there. Mm -hmm. But I heard the stories of it, and there was some fantastic contestants come through there. Yeah, he talked about Casey Tibbs, Jim Shoulders, um, and Jack Bushbaum, Sam. Uh, this would be in the 40s, and it was Colonel, what was the name? Colonel Eskew. Colonel Eskew, okay. Um, so can you imagine as a youngster, this was kind of his introduction to the rodeo and he just does a great job of describing it. Gary does, you know, the tent getting set up and everything that's happening. Casey Tibbs. I don't know if there's a more famous bronc rider or a bronc rider that became more famous in his era than him. No, I, I, I don't think there is even today, you know, Billy Atbauer might, be in that mix but uh as a kid that's all you heard about was casey tibbs and i did have the pleasure to meet him once really uh yeah it was at calgary stampede and um yeah it it for me you know i was only 18 19 years old and met casey tibbs and that's mm -hmm. just a phenomenal phenomenal thing i'll never forget yep yep and and we actually were in South Dakota, Pierre, South Dakota, and we went to the South Dakota Hall of Fame. And, of course, a lot of Casey Tibb memorabilia up there and his stories up there. If you have an opportunity to get up there, I encourage you to go see it. It's a great, a great Hall of Fame to be involved in. Um, and Jim Shoulders, Sam, I mean, another big name in the sport of rodeo. Dave Mentier shared a story about going um, to Jim Shoulders Rodeo School. Uh, and and he also mentioned that Ed Phillips went there as well. Yes. Uh, and, you know, Ed being uh, not even a real farm boy, you know, he and, and it might have been in the day where he lived, but to, to come out and not know anything about rodeo and, go get on stuff at Attica Rodeo and then go to Jim Shoulder School and Dave Ventier, the same thing, you know, go to a school where they could learn how to do it the best they knew how. Mm -hmm. It it that look at the drive oh, the, the men had to wanna be who they became. You bet. You bet. And and again we wanna we wanna capture the story because I'm always interested in that. You know, we always ask that, Sam. How'd you find rodeo? What in the world? You know, what were you doing? How did it come to your, even come to your attention? 
So love to get Ed on one day, and, and with any luck, we will get that done. And then the final one he talked about was just uh, Jack Bushbaum, a PRCA bareback bronc riding champion back in the 50s, 60s. Uh, a quick story, Sam. I was telling my dad about this uh, um, in uh, – I was telling my dad about this episode about Jack Bushbaum, and he offered up that – his father, Ned, Ned Simcox, we talked about him having the rodeo arena back in New Hartford, Iowa. He and a friend of his, Phil Stevens from New Hartford, they drove up and he thought it was somewhere in Wisconsin and they visited Jack Bushbaum when Jack got a bit older. So I don't know, you know, here's that missing link. I don't know who can tell me how they came in contact with him, what the conversation was like, but I don't want to miss any more of those. I want to minimize our missing those kind of links if we can, Sam. You know, and I, I never even heard of Jack Bushbaum before, mm -hmm. but uh, that that's really something that your grandfather has a connection with him. You bet. You know, you just bet. great. <laughs> yeah. All right. So shifting off that, we've got... Uh, and then, then the episodes. I shouldn't say shifting off that. We've got, of course, the 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 two the two episodes. Mike, Gary, Dave, and Daryl. Uh, part one and part two. What a hoot to sit down, Sam. We did something we never did. You and I were not on microphones. I just put it on record. I might have thrown out a big question here or there, but these these were just cowboys sitting around talking about their experiences. And the stuff I learned, and it was fun. These guys had fun. They interacted great, and we learned a bunch. Well, they loved what they did, yeah. you know. Yeah. They, they did it for a reason, and, you know, I, I can speak for Mike for sure that uh, he, he doesn't understand why everybody doesn't want to do it and uh, right. <laughs> love it like he does. But uh, they they loved what they did. They did a good job at what they did. And that's when you are good is when you're love it and having fun when it's your passion. You bet. You bet. And they covered a lot of ground. So to our listeners, uh, I think it's episode 66 and 67. Go give a listen. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, Cowboy Roundtable. And Sam, that trip was so successful. We learned a lot. First off, it's great to interview and, and, and talk with people, you know, face to face like we did. Um, we do a lot of recordings over the phone, right? However, man, there's nothing like being there, watching the expression, watching the energy, and engaging with them. Yeah, the face-to-face -face is so much better. Uh, you can see their reaction or when somebody says something and they're still talking, the other one's got something to say. You know, they're opening their mouth like they want to get it out. and yep. it, it, It's just... Uh, it just brings a whole new perspective you can't get over the phone. Absolutely. And that, that trip was so successful. It is, it is uh, uh, inspiring uh, our, our Memphis, or I'm sorry, our Tennessee um, BTC recording trip. Um, tour. I've been, I've been telling. It's Tennessee tour. <laughs> Tennessee tour. Tennessee tour. I've been telling everybody we're going to Nashville to record, by the way. You and I. Oh, okay. Okay. Well. okay. So we're just going to, we'll just say we're going to Nashville to record. Um, it e should be easy to break in. No issue, you know, break in to, to that business. Uh, but uh, we've got, we got some folks, uh, some, some folks that are, that have committed that we're going to get to. So have some fun with that. And October 5th, Sam, October 5th. I've already got it on my calendar. We are going to come back to upstate New York, uh, back to Rawhide Ranch, back to your brother's place, uh, Mike's place, and we're going to do some recording up there. That'll be so much fun again. Uh, I can stay home and uh, <laughs> we can do it. it. It just will be enjoyable. Absolutely. And we celebrate Mike's birthday, 70th birthday, and we celebrate his retirement from work. Although when I talk with him, it doesn't really sound like he's retiring. He's awfully busy with things. Got the food trailer and everything going on. It sounds like he's busy most of the summer darn near every weekend. So um, retired from one job. You know, uh, somebody once said to me, you know, you don't retire from something. You retire to something. <laughs> 
Probably true. <laughs> Probably so true. Bit of a different uh, mindset there. So let's move on. We've got the American. It took place last weekend, Sam, $100,000 to each winner. Um, bareback riding, Cade, Cade Sonier won that. Stage Newman won the saddle bronc riding. Creek Young in the bow riding. Steer wrestling, J.D. Stuckney's. Um, and a team that we had on our Pro Fantasy Rodeo for the NFR, Hunter Cook and Luke Brown. They win the team roping and the tie-down roping, the phenomenal, J what do they call him, Shad Money Mayfield um, put it on them. They had the breakaway roping. Uh, Sarah Angelone won that. And then the, then the barrel racing, Sam, the only $1 million winner. Uh, of that rodeo but think of that one million dollars and 1.1 million because the cowboy brandon cullens wins the barrel racing what a great event yeah uh, a couple things that jump out to me here is uh sarah angeloni who came through the high school rodeos in virginia uh, i used to do some down there when she was competing and uh, you seen the talent right then and she has moved on to do amazing things in the breakaway roping world. Um, and then Brandon Collins, uh, don't know the man personally. Uh, I know a relative of his from Attica, New York, and it is, uh, it has drawn a lot of attention, I guess would be one way to say it, mm -hmm. uh, to the barrel racing world, mm -hmm. but you know, they they have to do it and they have to be mounted on great horses and it's no easy task and you know there's so many great male barrel racing trainers out there mm -hmm. and now here's one that went on to win a million dollars so fantastic fantastic million dollars and this is the only event sam correct me if i'm wrong this is the only event or the only rodeo and professional rodeo that has men be part of and competing head to head with with these cowgirls and there was a 16 year old cowgirl she couldn't wait 100 pounds sam um she won the first she won the she won the long round which advanced her to short round um so be competing against someone who weighs less than you right uh and all to your point super horses i mean incredible horses and i've said in the past i'll say it again barrel racing is my favorite rodeo event you know, and that that's it. The girls weighing 100 pounds compared to somebody weighing 150 pounds, it, they they have an advantage. But then again, the strength, uh, and you don't want to use strength in barrel racing. I don't know, know anything about barrel racing. Don't claim to if I want to, you know, talk to people because I don't know. <laughs> right, but right. Uh, it, it, it still takes a lot to do it. And the barrel racing at this event was not a PRC or a WPRA sanctioned event. Right. It was a Open. BBR, yep. I think. Yep. Uh, yep. So that's why the men could compete. Yep. And right, wrong, or otherwise, uh, I think it opens up eyes and uh, shows people, even if they don't like a man doing it. Yeah. It, 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 it shows a that uh, it, it's not easy, and he won the million, so God bless him. So so what do you figure? He can buy two, maybe three barrel racing horses with that million dollars? What are you figuring, <laughs> Sam? Uh, I have no clue. <laughs> Depends on where he wants to go with it. Big money, right? <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I got one for sale for what he won, I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> or if I don't, I'll find it. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> But that's, you know, million dollars, you know, dude, this is, this is big. This is life changing for a rodeo cowboy or cowgirl. And we'll talk a little bit more about the WCRA here in a bit. Uh, but this is life changing money. Can you imagine a rodeo cowboy or cowgirl being able to, being able to put that into their, their bank account and, and fund their year and fund their operations and know, you know, just a little bit more safety net for these cowboys and cowgirls. I can, I can imagine it. 
because when Dalen won the 1.4 million, it scared me to death. Mm -hmm. You know, what's this going to do to him as a man? Okay. You know, okay. It's going to set him up in yeah. life yeah. very well. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it can ruin your life as well. Right. If you turn the wrong way, you know, I, I, I tell people I, I have no idea. You know, I'm, I was pretty tight with my money, but if I was that age and won that kind of money, yep. I don't know what I'd do. You yep. know, I, I can't say what I'd have done with it, but uh, I'm so proud that he has invested it. And yep. I wish he'd have done something different than cattle, but he's invested in cattle and land. <laughs> yeah. And land, I think, is the best investment. Oh, so sure. makes me very proud. And, you know, he gets up and he works. And I went out there one morning to see him and he, it was raining and cold. And he was out welding and working on stuff already. So oh, wow. made me smile very much. Okay. Great work work ethic. You know, uh, in one of the episodes, uh, uh, Mike actually talked about that work ethic. You know, we were talking about how young people get involved in the sport of rodeo and what it takes to be successful, whatever level of success that is. And he talked about, he mentioned Dalen's work ethic. And and I have to tell you, you know, the yoga, um, the yoga he's doing, it's it's harder than it looks. I mean, you, you can stand back, oh, it's yoga, right? Uh, focus on your breathing, all that sort of thing, which is great for quieting the mind for sure. But if you do one of these downward facing dogs, I mean, it's incredible. Um, when I uh, in 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 February, I actually went to a yoga class and it was hard work, Sam. It was hard work and you wouldn't think it. You're not lifting weights. You're not running. There's no cardio. But I'm stretching things that probably I haven't stretched since I was 18 or 19, if that makes sense. Well, Doug, at our age, <laughs> lifting a fork gets difficult. Anything almost, heavier than that's almost impossible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, All right. And speaking of a million dollars, um, um, in May 17th, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Let me see if I can say this. I'm going to say it one time. Kid Rock Rockin' Rodeo event coming in and Sam a million dollars up for grabs um, and and new to the sport of rodeo um, they're following the PBR lead here with the rodeo team format and five hundred thousand dollars to the winning team they're going to have team team coaches they are going to have kid rock concert will be there of course six teams are going to be advancing uh, there'll be six teams and a wild card team. So there's all kinds of ways to get involved. There's a draft. There's a qualifier at the Rodeo Corpus Christi, May 8th through the 11th. 16 competitors total is what I'm reading will be chosen for the team draft. Heads up stuff. Um, let's see. What else? Um, and it's a WCRA rodeo, Sam. So what do you think about this brand new rodeo team format? Not in the PBR now, in professional rodeo. Well, first off, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's not brand new. What? But uh, this is another level from where it was at originally. Okay. Um, I... I actually competed in the team format back in the early eighties and it was phenomenal. It, it was just phenomenal. It, what, what they did. And I think they're following pretty much the same format. George Runquist was a rodeo promoter and he did several of these, uh, Oh, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Atlanta. Uh, and and, and I, you were on a team, Sam. You were a competitor on the team. I was a competitor on a team. I rode for the Southern Rodeo Association. Okay. And uh, it, that was a wise choice. I could have rode for the American Rodeo Association or the Southern Rodeo Association. Yeah. And I never... Oh, never did great down the South. You know, when I was young, it just seemed like I was fighting the war. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, okay. And when they asked me to be on the team and I don't know why I chose it over the 
American, but mm -hmm. uh, I did. And then it was like, oh, they couldn't beat you. So, uh, but they were just so nice people down there. Of course, most everybody in the rodeo world is. They were so nice people and they're so inviting and they kind of wooed me to, to go our, that route. And I enjoyed every minute of it. It was, it was great. But uh, they did the starting lights like in a barrel race. It, okay. Um, and, and when you say starting light, so two competitors ran exactly at the same time in the same arena. Correct. They, they would have in a barrel race and it was probably the most unique of all of them. Uh, they would put, instead of three barrels out there, they would put five barrels. Five barrels, okay. Five barrels. And they had, like, starting lights for a drag race, like red, yellow, green, and then you go when it turns green. Mm -hmm. But your horses had to be stand, you know, you can't have one that's spinning and around backwards when it turns green. Uh, so they they did that. And the it has to be horses that both run to the right against each other or both run to the left against each other. That meaning the first barrel, they'd turn to the right or to the left. So they would each run to their first barrel um, as uh, the girl to the right would go to the normal barrel first. Yep. The girl to the left would run to the center barrel of the three going across the arena. Of, of your first barrel line. So you got three across the first line, first level, and then second level where your final third barrel, there were two barrels up there, Sam. Correct. Okay, got it. And, uh, yeah, so they'd, they'd run to the, their first barrel and turn that to the right, say. They run to the second barrel. They turn that to the left, which now the first girl that's in the middle of the arena okay. for her. Okay. And then they would go up and turn the third barrel separately, like normal. And it was a horse race when they came back across the finish line. It was a horse race, mm -hmm. and I. The, it, it was even in Calgary. You know, when you put that picture up of Mike from the Ontario Rodeo team. Yeah. Um. There was uh. The team format was in Calgary, just like that. Okay. So, okay. it uh, so it's been around a little bit, but uh, he 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 was probably George was probably like most inventive people before their time, and now you know, thirty years later, it's caught up to him and moving forward. But th this could put the rodeo format in a whole new level okay it it, okay. it could change everything because at, at that age i didn't pay a whole lot of attention what went on and crowds and all that but two calf ropers run together uh with the starting lights just so you got to have a horse that scores excellent in there and the only thing they didn't do team roping back then, and I don't know if they're doing it in this format. That might be difficult. Uh, steer wrestling would wouldn't be too bad, you know. But uh, team roping that that could be a little more difficult. So. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a million dollars, Sam, and a half a million dollars to the winning team. Big money. Uh, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, May 17th. It's going to be on. Uh, you'll be able to watch it on TV. I don't know, Cowboy Channel, who will carry it, uh, CBS Sports. Somebody will have it out there. Uh, as we get more information, Sam, maybe we can share it up. Yeah, and uh, it was – they also did in the rough stock where they matched you up to the livestock just like they do in the PBR Oh, now. okay, okay. So you could pick what you want. And I actually went over to Australia for the U.S. team, and they did that same thing uh, where you could pick your livestock. And okay. it, uh, you know, not knowing the livestock till you watched them go a few times, and yeah. then you knew which ones you wanted. And you didn't so, always get it. There was one so like, horse over. So like the PBR, the livestock would be drawn – for the team, and then the team decides who they're going to put on the bronc, is what I'm Correct. Thinking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they tried to match it up, you like, uh, you say there was eight head, mm -hmm. 
or 10 head, those four or five, they would try to match horse one the same as horse one in the other pool. So they tried to keep it fairly even. You know, if there was rank one, they'd put another rank one. And if you had a hopper, they'd put a hopper next to it. So you could try to, and what you had to do was try to, I think it was a point system like if, you were on the American rodeo team mm -hmm. and you won it, you were 80, 86 and the other guy was 84, mm -hmm. you might have got 10 points and he got five. I see. Okay. I, I don't okay. know how it worked, but that, <laughs> right. that was a concept anyway. Right. All right. Well, it's going to be interesting to watch. I'm, I mean, it's, I'm just curious as heck. First time they've done it. PBR Kid Rock, Kid Rock's Rockin' Rodeo. May 17th, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Half a million dollars to the winning team. Sam, we got to we gotta watch that. I think I'm going to try to go down live. I, I oh, wow. really want to okay. see how it goes and uh, the reaction from the crowd and all that stuff. And it, it just, I, I think I'm going to go watch it. Well, take your... Take your recording, your your microphone and your laptop and everything with you, and maybe we can set up and get kind of your feedback right while you're there. Now you're pushing it, Doug. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> it's what we do. We're out front, and we are pushing, breaking, breaking new ground. Speaking of breaking new ground, you called this. You know, every so often I say, I say Sam, you're, you were right. Uh, PBR expansion. Um the um, uh, the PBR Camping World Team Series, the Oklahoma Freedom. This no this news broke about three months ago. The Oklahoma Freedom moves to Florida to become the Florida Freedom, and then it got quiet. And we said, "What's going on? Isn't Oklahoma going to have a team anymore?" And up comes the news. There's a brand new team. It's called the Oklahoma Wildcatters. And their coach, Sam, J.B. Mooney, the PBR two-time world champion. What a name, the Wildcatters with J.B. Mooney for the coach. I wonder if he's the one that named the team. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I just love this team concept. When you go to it live, they are into it. And it, it just, I see nothing but building and building on this. And, you know, J.B. Mooney's going to bring stuff to the table that uh, only he can do and i believe will be a fantastic coach he knows the game inside and out and i think it'll just bring credibility to what he's doing yeah yeah well it was interesting i read a quote uh, uh, uh he, they were interviewing him and they said what are you looking for for the team and he said we only want positive thinking people on the team, understanding the, the power of negative thinking and how that can harm a team. So he says, you better, better bring your best attitude when you come. We're going to think positive. And he can be positive. They have the first, tri uh, the first pick in the 2024 PBR expansion draft. Sam, I don't even know what this is just yet when this takes place because there is the normal PBR team draft have you heard anything on that what when this expansion draft is going to be going off no i haven't okay. now now that you're just saying that kind of in my mind and we can find out whether i'm right or wrong later on i think what teams will probably end up doing is putting only being able to protect so many guys like mm -hmm. three guys three guys that's and, what i read yep so Maybe everybody else will be going to this expansion draft. I don't know. Okay. Uh, but that would be my guess. And then they'll have the regular draft after that. So these three new teams have to get uh, two new teams, two I new guess, because Oklahoma is went to Florida, and that's not a new team. It was just a, a change of address i guess yeah change of address and the other team before you say it i gotta tell you i was so excited when i saw this you and i have talked about this i see the new york mavericks the headline and i'm like son of a gun sam put a deal together we're gonna see perfard new york um and i was disappointed to see i'm excited to see new york mavericks disappointed to see it's in brooklyn sam well 
<laughs> it's I'm sure it's going to have its challenges being in Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's it is what it is. And all big things go through New York City. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. Yeah. where yeah. football well, not started. But, you know, the, the East Coast has, you know, one, two, three, four, five major yeah. Yeah. football teams within, you know, from yeah. Boston to uh, Baltimore. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So Philadelphia within, Eagles, of course. Yeah, yeah. Philadelphia no, right. Giants, Jets, uh, Carolina. Um, I didn't even go that far. There's um, another one in um, there, Baltimore and uh, Philadelphia, Baltimore Giants, Jets, <laughs> Jets. Yeah, Buffalo. So, anyway, Buffalo. Well, that's Western New oh, York. Oh, is that too far? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, think about it. Yeah. Within a probably a 200-mile driving yeah. radius, there's five NFL teams. Yeah, you can get to uh, it for sure. So anyway, yeah. uh, what what a, I, I love it. I, yeah. I think it's great. Uh, it, I, I will even try to go down and watch the first event. Okay. Okay. I should say inaugural because yeah. I'm talking, but uh, yeah. I'll go down and try to watch the first event and and see how it goes. I I, I think, it, and it will, you know, present its challenges where they're going to go for their practice sessions and uh, where they're going to get the bulls and all that. You know, I, I, I until you're there, you don't know. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, they might have it all figured out, and I'm sure they do because. You, you don't do something like that without being uh, on the ball. You bet. Well, what I love about this, too, this expansion opens up new opportunities for coaches, for head coaching. Uh, Cody Lodstrom, he was the former assistant coach with the Oklahoma Freedom. Now, now the Florida Freedom. He gets promote, he gets the lead. He is the head coach now for the New York Mavericks. And I was I, excited to see that Edna Caminas is his assistant coach, Sam, world champion and long time, long time competitor. We saw him actually compete in Johnstown when we were there in Pennsylvania. You know, these these teams have really gotten smart to put in a Brazilian coach on there. Mm -hmm. uh, if nothing else, communication. But uh, I think Mr. Caminas brings fitness and yep. try to the table as yep. much as anything. Because he's what, and, 48, 49 years old, I believe? Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal yeah. that uh, he can good. still ride at a high level. And uh, this, this, you know, if he didn't have this, he'd be done and... Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. retired but uh this this is a great opportunity for him and I, I think he will bring instill that in his people you know get in the best shape you can it doesn't matter how old or what you're doing let's let's get there yeah and uh, let alone being able to speak the language of these guys and not having to stumble and try to explain what you're trying to help them with you're exactly right you know you talk about brazilian coaches uh paulo crimber he's the head coach for the florida freedom all that connection we hear jw hart and all these folks that go down and are continuously scouting um uh, in brazil and um cassio diaz is an example of that they brought him up Early in the season, in the team seasons last year, and right now, um, Sam, he is number one in the PBR individual standings, and Paulo Crimber's son, John Crimber, 18 years old, number two right now. Yeah, and the, these guys are just riding phenomenal, just phenomenal. And they're young and talented have the work ethic. They've seen it. Everybody their whole life, especially John, you know, he's been around the Brazilians for, you know, his whole life and seeing what they do to get where they want to be. So um, that being said, they don't have the bumps and bruises that hmm. some of these older contestants have. And yeah. that, that, that really helps them. Uh, mm -hmm. And, move forward but 
we'll, we'll see how they do. Right now, they they are at the top of the heat and deserve to be so. Yeah, yeah. And and in a future episode, uh, we will talk about the draft and all things like that, Sam. Because these all these players, all these folks we're talking about are gonna are gonna weave into that draft. And you're right, Cassio Diaz number one, John Krimber number two, Dalton Castle number three. Um, Dalton looks looks strong. Looks like in in this last few events, he's come back really strong and and. Uh, interesting to hear his interviews he's it sounds like he's changed his mindset just a little bit got married has a baby uh yeah and you know it took him he went through a lot when he tore i think both groins off the bone good lord and i don't know what it is uh i never talked to him about it but i think that's was his recovery and it took him two years to really get back to his level of riding and he is there now and doing a great job and then we've got dalen in 18th place we've got jose vitor lemmy two-time world champion uh in 27th place and sam correct me if i'm wrong i believe you need to be in the top 35 to make it to the finals i believe that's correct uh i, I can't correct you if you're wrong but yes it, I think that's the scenario. It might be top 35, and then they take five guys from Velocity Tour champions that's and right. finals that's right. champions and things of that nature. Okay, but but you've got to be in the top 35 in the PBR, Unleash the Beast standings, and or then go to the Velocity Tour finals. And none of those points anymore – they don't matter, right? If I'm riding UTB and I go down, I ride velocity, those earnings uh, in the velocity, they don't come forward to the Unleash the Beast like they used to. No. Um, the only points that count to the Unleash the Beast is if you're on that tour. And Yep. 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 All right, so we're going to see. What have you heard about Jose Vitor Lemmy? Number 27, he wasn't at the last event. He wasn't in Milwaukee. What What are you, what are you hearing, if anything? I haven't heard anything. Um, if he goes to Albuquerque mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or if he misses it, that will say a lot. I guess if he misses it, it'll say more than going, but... Uh, you know that's a major pays a hundred thousand to win it and if he's healthy he'll be there but uh if he's not we'll say wow it uh something something's more the matter than what we know yeah yeah okay so we'll watch we'll watch so of course last weekend milwaukee wisconsin caden bunch the young man from texas wins uh that event we go to Little Rock, Arkansas this weekend in two weeks, I believe, is Albuquerque, New Mexico. It is, as Sam said, the final major. And then looking down the road a little bit further, last event before the finals in Texas is April 26th, 27th, Louisville at the Yum Brands Arena. Sam, last year you were here. We went to it. We actually, we actually did some of our first recording for the podcast that weekend. Are you coming to Louisville? I am planning on it, Doug. Mm -hmm. I am planning on it. Okay. Uh, so we'll we'll see how it goes, but uh, that that is in the cards. Okay. Good. Excellent. Well, that'll be fun to to see you and uh, to to go watch that great event. And it's the last event before the finals, so. We'll be talking a little bit more about that stuff as we uh, as we roll forward. And then uh, some upcoming Beyond the Shoot episodes, Sam. We are in process um, of hopefully getting with Jim and Maggie Zinzer about their great bronc, their mare, Nightmare, who in 1972, 73, and 74 was the International Professional Rodeo Association Bareback of the Year. Uh, we're going to hear the story directly from them. Uh, what What's your thoughts on that upcoming episode that we're going to be recording, Sam? We haven't recorded it yet. Well, this is the one I'm probably looking the most forward to doing mm -hmm. uh, that we've done this time. 
uh, what they have done in the rodeo world, nobody else has come close to. Not not even comparison. And knowing them personally and their background a little bit, it's not like okay they parents own Kodak or mm-hmm. Bausch and Laum. You know, they're just hardworking people and put stuff together and came out with the best string line of horses in the country. Uh, yeah. You know, nobody has equaled them and not even to this day. And they're, they're trying and they're using their breeding to get there. But uh, what they had done in the rodeo world is phenomenal. Yeah. And, and we're going to cover this in the episode, but I've been reading, catching up. There's a lot of information out there. The progeny of nightmare night jacket, of course, was inducted in the pro rodeo hall of fame uh, in the 2023 class. That was kind of one of the things that pointed us at it, but you've always talked about nightmare and always talked about the great blood stock that, that she brought um, and I read something the other day, Sam, something like 60 of her offspring has competed in, uh, at the NFR. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. 60 of her offsprings, yeah. you know, to get, they, they take a hundred horses in each event. Yeah. It doesn't mean there were 60 of them that year, but. It, it probably wasn't far off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's phenomenal. And, phenomenal. and something like $2 million in NFR winnings on these Bronx. So we're going to get the full story. I'm so looking forward to it. Um, this this is just, I mean, you want to talk about the basics and the foundation of, of the IPRA Rodeo. 1970, they they, they purchased this, this mayor nightmare and, you're going to hear the story. I'm I'm so excited about this one coming up. Another one that I'm excited about, Sam, uh, when you and I were at the IFR, we did one long form interview and it was with the 1983 all around champion and saddle bronc world champion of the international professional rodeo association, Mr. Mike Fletcher. And everybody that knows Mike, um, knows this will be very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Mike has a, a special way of saying what he wants to say and yeah. doesn't hold back with anything. And it's just, uh, he's a great, great contestant, cowboy, and loves life. And that'll come through with the podcast. Yep. Yeah. And one other thing, connecting it all back to it all, as it always does, um, we're going to be recording this afternoon with Mike Fletcher. He's going to be telling us about his personal experience with nightmare so i'm excited about that sam everything everything's connected now we talked earlier about uh, the tennessee recording tour what i call our nashville nashville recording recordings i probably shouldn't say that should i that's not completely true well if they think i'm going to nashville to sing everybody knows that's not going to happen <laughs> Well, we've got two lined up so far, and you and I are going to get on the road, going to get in the bus. Um, um, who is it? John Madden used to, you know, travel the country from NFL game to NFL game in his bus. We are going to get the bus out, and we are headed to, to Tennessee. So far on the on our list is Dennis Morris. We're going to be talking with him, uh, bull riding world champion of the International Professional Rotary Association, and Mr. Matt Harris. Um, He's got a great story, of course, beyond being Liesel Harris's son. He had quite a, quite an impact on the sport of rodeo, and we're going to be able to sit down with him. So Dennis Morris, Matt Harris, we got more people on our list who we want to get with. Sam, what do you think about the, the tours that's shaping up so far? Uh, I, I look forward to it. You know, I've never met Matt. I've known Liesel for a long time, and Actually, well, you know, he came and worked one of the yeah. last rodeos he ever did is uh, in Ford one City. of the bars in Ford City, Pennsylvania. Yeah. So uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to him. And those of you that know Dennis, well, he's Dennis. 
yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it will be yeah. all over the place. So yeah. it'll be interesting. I am excited. I've had a couple conversations with him. We we lined this up when we were at the IFR. It's time to get it done, Sam. We got to go. Yes, I, I I'm looking forward to it. Perfect. Let's shift. Let's stay on the. Let's shift to the IPRA standings. Uh, and this is up to I think two days ago. You know, as they report out, uh, the bareback bronc riding number one in your standings, and and the they will run through Sam. What is it? Uh, it starts in the fall. The season starts in the fall, ends in the fall, of course. So we are talking about dollars that will qualify them to the IFR. Correct. Okay. Yep. And, and in the lead in the bareback bronc riding right now, Cumberland Furnace, Tennessee, Cowboy Tate Papsiki is in the lead. Number two, Quinton Lunsford. And number three, several-time world champion Joshua Michael Krager uh, is sitting number three. And our reigning champion, Tanner Phipps, Dalton, Georgia Cowboy, he's currently sitting number 10. But the season is just getting kicked up and, and underway. Yeah, and uh, looking at the bareback riding, the thing that jumps out to me, and uh, four of the top ten are from Tennessee. Pretty, pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And that that could be from where the rodeos are, and of course, uh, Blaine Houston from McBain, Michigan, is in there, and I think that young man just has such an interesting career ahead of him. He's going to be going to college this year. I think he'll learn so much from the college coaches. I don't know which college he did finally decide on, but uh, I'll find out. Yeah, let well, you know. Well, we, we, we do need to find out. We, we can catch up with him. And, you know, we went around at the IFR. Uh, we got to talk with him, you know. I think it was Saturday night there. We got to talk with him right after he picks up his belt buckle. Uh, he's still in high school, Stan. This is his final year, I believe, of, of competition. And when we, when we talked with him, I think he's going to go to the International Finals Youth Rodeo in July. And then, of course, a high school rodeo right behind that. Yeah, and uh, it, it it shows you what these high school events do for these young kids. And they jump into the big stage, and they're not overwhelmed like I was, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You go to Cheyenne, you go to Calgary, you go to those big rodeos, and you're you're like, holy moly, you know, here here you're just a little kid. But uh, these these youth rodeos are so big. And you get to that stage, and it, it, it doesn't take you by surprise. It, it's it's just another rodeo, and that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. But you're right. I mean, a lot of maturity coming there. Um, and what 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 great fun to watch him, you know, Blaine at the finals and to talk with him. What a great young man. And uh, I think we're going to be talking about him for a long, long time, Sam. I believe so. And at the highest level of rodeo. Yep, I believe so. Uh, shifting to the bull riding, uh, top 10, your top money run winner is Austin Beatty, a rookie. And the thing that stands out for me on the top 10 right now, Sam, there are six rookies in the top 10. Well, in the bull riding, uh, you know, you get young kids wanting to go and they travel hard and they're, they're tearing it up. A lot of these rookies will travel together. Mm -hmm. Um Austin though is no rookie. He uh, he's been around a long time. He's won the first frontier circuit, I think, a couple times, and rides very well. Uh, a military man or a police officer. I'm not. Maybe he's a police officer, but stays in fantastic shape and just just a very humble young man. Good good guy. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to have a little backstory. I mean, you remind me of one thing. Typically the IFR and the first frontier circuit finals are on the same weekend. And this year, the way the calendar falls, I'm understanding, Sam, you can qualify and go to the IFR and qualify and go to the first frontier circuit I'm I'm tickled for that. I wish they'd fix this permanently or, or make this happen permanently because you've got so much talent on that East Coast and through the Midwest that is competing in both the IFR and the First Frontier Circuit. Yeah, and it only 
doesn't overlap like every five years. Okay. And okay. You know, even with livestock, you had to make a choice where you're going to send your animals. And, uh, uh, you know, I, towards the end, I started, you know, 24 hours away or four hours away. So me being the driver I am, I kind of stayed four hours away. <laughs> right. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and a lot of cowboys that we've talked to, Sam, it always, there's this overriding theme. You were, you were less of a driver and more of a rider <laughs> going down the road. And now I'm just a driver. <laughs> no, you're but, uh, just a driver. And if you got any complaints about the driver, you look in the mirror, right? Exactly. You know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, it is nice that they can compete at both, both finals this year. You bet. So, you bet. but it only happens every four years. I understand it, you know, buildings, scheduling and all that. Uh, but uh, they will they make their choices, and this year they won't have to. That That is excellent. That is excellent. I'm excited about that. And then, of course, in the Saddle Bronc riding, Sam, we got Eli Hers Hershberger, Rawhide Rodeo alumni out there representing Rawhide Rodeo, McBain, Michigan, in the number one position, uh, sitting with about $3,600 right now. Yeah. Uh, what do you say about Eli? I miss that boy. He's a good kid. Yeah. Right. Riding well and to be number one, I'm so proud of that. I hope he can, if that's his goal this year, carry it on all the way through and get to be number one in the world. Absolutely, and I, I know he'll put the effort in. Yep, yep. There's nothing, there's nothing stopping Eli effort wise. Yep, he, he has it. Absolutely, and we're going to cheer him on, and we'll we'll stay in touch with him. I always ask at the end of these, what's the Rawhide crew doing? Of course, we're talking about uh, Eli Hershberger and, and Ray, Raymond Hofstetter, right? Those are two of your bronc riders that are out in the world uh, riding in the IPRA, so we'll stay in touch with them. Um, and, of course, the Troyer, Troyer boys are there. Two, two of the boys are there, Eli and Rudy in the top five. Cody Reinhardt, number five we interviewed him he won a round at the ifr and sam talk about any of them and a cowboy spur montag if that's not a rodeo cow name cowboy name i don't know what is spur montag from aliquippa pennsylvania you like that i can say aliquippa properly uh, you did good you did good <laughs> uh well spur comes from a rodeo family uh -huh. is uh well i guess you'd know that by hearing the name montags uh, yep yep what no spur spur yeah yeah for sure for sure for sure uh but uh he comes from a rodeo family his father puts on rodeos back there in pennsylvania and ohio mm -hmm. uh so he's brought up in it and i've seen some progression from videos that they post okay and it looks okay. like he's doing very well and Good. Number two in the stands, he must be doing very well. Yeah. So yeah. good for him. Good for him. And the Troyer brothers, anything to say about those boys? I know one worked with you and so forth. Yeah, Eli and Rudy. I don't know these boys. Okay. Uh, the the brother worked for me for a little while, had so much talent, just so much talent. You just couldn't, as much as I wanted him to stay there, yeah. he uh, he moved on, and uh, which is, that's what you do it for. You know, and then he, he did go to college out with the Etbowers and uh, Tim Troyer was, he, he, he rides so good, just yep. very well. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, we're going to be watching the Bronco riding as we always do. Uh, in the tie down calf roping, um, Justin Thigpen, your reigning world champion, Wake Cross, Georgia, $5,200, Sam, comes into the lead. Uh, and just a little bit of connection back to the WCRA. He placed eighth at the Lazy Arena, the Stampede at the E, the weekend before the IFR. That money all counts, and he won $5,232 at that event, Sam. Power of the WCRA money. You've talked about it. It's going to change world championships. You know, somebody goes and knocks him out at two or three of those WCRAs. You know, it, it'll be hard to beat him for the world. And which is kind of their format that they want. You know, they they want to get in all aspects of contestants, not the ones that are just traveling and, and uh, going down the road hard, but 
somebody that doesn't want to travel a whole lot can go and win a world by going to the WCRAs. And that would have worked wonderful for me later on in my career. You bet. You bet. No, to have this. I mean, it reminds us, and we've talked about this, Sam, it, uh, when you talk about the good old days, the the historic days of the IPRA. And, of course, we talk about Longhorn Rodeo, the building rodeos throughout the winter, um, the world's toughest. That was what you had the ability to do back then. All winter long, uh, you could get to a rodeo darn near every weekend and for big money and for tough, tough, tough competition. Yeah, back in the day, that that was uh, really good money. It didn't matter where you were at. Uh, Bruce Lurkey, Steve Grander, they knew the to get the contestants they wanted, they had to put up the prize money, and they did. And it it worked out so well for the IPRA. It, it gave contestants something to go to through the winter. Uh, good rodeos, not just rodeos, but good rodeos through the winter. And it, the summer run was always good anyway. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and then the fall ro run was very well with Longhorn mm -hmm. and World's Toughest with Steve Gander. So just great rodeos to go to. And now with the WCRA, you're going to have four or five of those really big rodeos you can go through for the year and win, you know, 25,000 event or 50,000. You bet. Or a million. Or a million. Absolutely. Triple crown of rodeo, right? We're going to be talking yep. about that here in a bit. Steer wrestling, Cody Dosher, Weber Falls, Oklahoma, number one in your points race, almost $12,000 money won already, Sam, and it's only March. Yeah. Um, don't know this man personally. Uh, seen him around a little bit at some of those big events that Colton was going to to qualify for the American and uh, WCRA super talented and it's showing look at that well almost 12,000 already yep and way out in front so. way out in front three times what your number two cowboy Caleb Little is sitting with um anyone else stand out for you in the top 10 here Sam Oh, the only one is uh, Eli Troyer. Uh, yep, number nine. I guess mm -hmm. surprises me that uh, he's bulldog and Cord Cor Dyer. Uh, of course, he's from back east, and mm -hmm. he he worked with the crew that bought my company that year, mm -hmm. and uh, so I got a little history with him, but. Other than that, that this is going to shake up. So when these rodeos really start going, uh, the, everything's going to shake up to where they're at. You bet. You bet. No, exciting times. I'm I'm really interested in where this is going. Moving on to my favorite event in the sport of rodeo, uh, Cowgirl Barrel Racing, Kendall Scruggs, South Haven, Mississippi, Cowgirl. We watched her. I think she won the third round at the IFR. Um Mississippi Cowgirl, as I said, and she's sitting with $14,000. And just for the records here, she picked up ten, almost $11,000, Sam, at the WCRA Stampede at the E the weekend before the IFR. Fourteen grand. Number two, the first of the Julies, Julie Thomas, uh, sits with 6500 Julie Plard, who is um, your reigning barrel racing champion out of quebec she's sitting in the number five position and then julie goodrich because that was a story during the ifr julie goodrich uh tennessee cowgirl sitting number eight you know uh of course kendall's always done well um on multi-horses so you know she's a good jockey or a good trainer uh, i don't know which it is but maybe I, it's probably everything above uh always always mounted doing well uh a little tidbit i was down here they had a cowboy uh reunion uh and julie thomas no it, it must have been a celebration of life okay here where i'm staying okay and okay julie thomas was there and i didn't even recognize her because it 
it didn't put it in place. And mm -hmm. as she was leaving, you know, she just waved goodbye. And I thought, oh, look at that. I didn't even know she was there. And she's leaving. And I didn't get to talk to her. Okay. So, uh, we, but we, she's from Georgia and uh, came out to the celebration of life yeah. here at the Kickback Ranch. We we had planned, Sam, on recording her at the IFR, and our, our schedules got all, all sideways. I still would love to talk with her. So at some point, maybe we can dial her up and, and uh, see what's going on there. Yeah. And, and a couple other notes, uh, a couple other cowgirls that aren't in the barrel racing standings just yet. Emily Stiles, the young lady out of Plymouth, Indiana, if you remember her. I mean, wins two rounds, I believe it was. She placed... Um, uh, big money, right in the in the average and all that. The 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 young cowgirl we interviewed her, she's yet to come to break out. So the you know lots going on. And then your cowgirl that you were a big promoter of, Wendy Chestnut, out of Vermont, isn't even in the standings yet. And you got to know she's coming. Well, there'll be a lot of girls that are coming for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure those two will be there, but. Uh, that that barrel racing is so competitive, so competitive. You know, any any given day, you know, there's thousands of girls out there that could be in this top ten. Yep. Uh, yep. It, it's just a matter who who wants it enough to travel the roads. That's right. So Kendall Scrubs, your number one leader at this point, uh, Mississippi cowgirl, talking about traveling the roads, fourteen thousand dollars, Sam, in March. Let's move on to the team roping in the header on the header side. Uh, we've got we've got some big money coming out already. Number one, number two, they're only about a thousand dollars apart on the header side. Jake Wells, Alabama Cowboy, sitting with almost eighty five hundred dollars, and he won at the Lazy E in that Stampede of the E. Uh, he and Briar Hamilton, who we'll be talking about in the in the race for the healing. Team Roping Championship. Uh, they picked up $4,700 there. Heath King, number two, they picked up $5,300. He and his teammate, Stephen Britnell, more big money showing up and getting it done. And these guys, uh, both number one and number two, uh, I don't know the headers very well, but I know the healers that they rope behind them and they're only going to have good partners. Yep. So uh, it, it, uh, it goes to say that that team will carry on each way. And I bet you they're battling back and forth all year. Yep. I hope so, man. This is good watching Sam. This is just good watching. Um, and so Briar Hamilton, we're talking about the healers now, and we've already talked about their partners, Briar Hamilton, Stephen Brittno, they're in the number one, number two position, both Tennessee Cowboys. Number one is sitting with 10,000, number two sitting with 7,000. Just so impressive again, as I say, big money coming out of the winter season. Yeah, uh, and like I said, it's, it's going to be fun to watch because they're going to be uh, – I think battling it back and forth all year. So moving on to the cowgirl breakaway roping, and I'm so excited the IPRA brought this event into professional rodeo. They were at the IFR. Great watching. We we saw Kyla Matthews win the championship last year. She's currently number two. Hadassah Molot's number one, winning almost $5,300. And another note, Sam, on the cowgirl breakaway roping, St. Tita's announced that it is officially in the show. Yeah, it's, um, St. Tite has had it in the slack uh, along with the team roping. Mm -hmm. But uh, now they're putting it at the show. I think that's a very wise move. Uh, very fast, quick event. Crowd loves it. I, 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 I just think it will add something spectacular to their show. You bet. And it gives the girls a little – it makes it a little more difficult for them because it used to be like Tuesday and Wednesday and the slack was over and they could go home. Uh, now they're going to have to stay there all week long to see what, who makes a short go. Yep. And, it, and that's okay. That's part of growing pains. You bet. So you bet. I look forward to it. 
Perfect, perfect. And the one thing we haven't talked about yet, we, we, we teased it out, said we need to, so we're going to. Uh, 2003 IPRA Buck and Livestock of the Year, Bareback Bronc of the Year, New York uh, uh, Rodeo uh, rodeo contractor painted pony championship rodeo of course sean and shannon graham uh 36 willie is the bareback bronc of the year and it is a shame i don't know this horse uh but he must be great congratulations to sean and shanna uh i'm definitely going to check it out this summer i'll probably go to an event or two of theirs to to see if uh i can see why this horse did what he did so it, it's just a wonderful award to win absolutely yeah no no very excited for it saddle bronc rider number 13 silver dollars of the southern rodeo company and finally the bull of the year 775 shark bait tk pro rodeo company what do you think of do you know anything about these the, the bronc and the bull sam no i don't uh i did watch shark bait at the ifr and he really really bucked uh but i really don't know anything about him not being in the circles of riding anymore it, it makes it very difficult to get the livestock i used to be very well at what livestock was what and how they did i i, I didn't go as far as keeping records but i did have a when my mind was good, I, I I could tell you pretty much everything about them. Right. Okay, good, good. Well, it's time to get your mind back good, Sam. We're going to put you on the road. You're going to go You're going to go see some of these. And speaking of going on the road, BTC, of course, we're talking about going to Tennessee. But, Sam, we're in the early stages of planning for the International Finals Youth Rodeo mid-July. I think we ought to go. I do, too. Uh if we want to see the new up and coming contestants, you know, possibly world champions, mm -hmm. I think we should go there. And uh, as we go on through the years, say, yeah, remember that kid? We've seen him at. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Can you, and then we'll say, hey, you're a world champion. Won't you come on BTC? Won't you remember when we recorded? You were, you were 17 years old and you were in the bus. Don't you remember? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> got to got to build those connections. Got to build those connections. Absolutely. And you know the IFYR. Good golly, what two thousand contestants? Bo both Colton and Dalen, I believe, have competed there, and like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in prize money. High school age kids. Yeah, just it's just there. There you go again. A, a stage that they can learn to not be overwhelmed by the awe of the big rodeos that's right. and just move on because that's a big rodeo so you get that under your belt you know kids your own age and when you step up, up to the next level you're ready all right final note on the wcra um we have one million dollar eligible for the triple crown of rodeo of course bell racer stephanie fryer um she won Rodeo Carolina. She won Stampede at the E in January. Um, her next event, where if she wins the next event in Corpus Christi, Sam, a million dollars. What an opportunity. What an opportunity. You know, and she's done two out of the three. I wish her well. You know, the more people that win that million, and it's a difficult task, the more it'll draw in and people can say, wow, it can be done. Yep. And I always said it would probably be the bell race that would win it first. It wasn't. It was a bareback riding. But, you know, they're all indoors. Mm -hmm. uh, the ground's going to be kind of the same for all of them. And it's not the luck of the draw. There is somewhat to when you're going on the pattern, but uh, that doesn't eliminate you if you get a bad draw or one you can't ride eliminate you completely out of it so yep. Yep. uh yep. I, I i don't know i don't know this girl but it would not surprise me if she wins it you bet well we're going to cheer her on stephanie fryer we're going to be watching that corpus christi i believe that's in may um lots going on and speaking of lots going on sam 
Uh, I had an opportunity to catch up with, right before the show, I gave BJ Prince a call. Of course, he's Rawhide Rodeo Ontario. Ontario, um, And he we caught up. Everything from the IFR to his trip to, Carol, uh, to California, uh, how his season's uh, shaping up. And uh, let's give a listen to that. Hey, I'm on the phone today with Mr. B.J. Prince, Rawhide Rodeo up there in Ontario. How are you this morning, B.J.? Fantastic, Doug. How are you? I am good. I am good. Great to have you on the phone today. And uh, we got a lot of ground to cover. First off, last time I saw you was at the International Finals Rodeo in January down there in Guthrie. Uh, great to catch up with you there. And, and after your after your first day there at the finals, you took off for California. So give me, give us your impressions, number one, of what you saw at the International Finals Rodeo, and then, if you would, share about California. Yeah, what they're doing at the IFR has been fantastic over the last few years. Like, after the move to Guthrie and the additional investment into that rodeo, I think the caliber of contestants and stock is has gone up, the, the prize money's gone up, the fees to the contractors um, and their animals have gone up. So their partnership with the WCRA has really created some unique and exciting opportunities. Um, I only got to watch a few of the perfs and, and the awards banquet as, uh, yeah, we kind of got out of there before the weather got bad and, and uh, went off to California for to watch another truly remarkable event uh, over where the San Diego Padres play. Yeah, and what uh, what what can you share about your California trip, BJ? I know there was a lot going on. Yeah, there was a lot going on. Uh, some friends with C5 Rodeo uh, were producing a standalone rodeo event there with all of the events in rodeo, and they transformed that uh, ballpark into a world-class rodeo facility. Uh, Vernon and his crew did a tremendous job uh, over there, and uh, they put on a great rodeo they, with the best cowboys in the world and uh, they had some of the best stock there and uh, they came up against you know some obstacles early on Um, there hasn't been a rodeo in San Diego for a few decades and uh, so they had to do some education and regarding animal rights and and a lot of conversations with city council but uh, in the end they uh, they did a really phenomenal job It it was one of the better rodeos I've been to for a long time. Another big rodeo that you that you're part of, of course, the Western Festival of Saint Tite, sixty one years this year in September. Tell me what uh, tell me what you got in store there. What you guys are thinking, you and Sylvan? Yeah, the festival committee has done great coming out of COVID. It was it was tough for them. They shut down the festival, you know, for a couple of years, and it's and it's a, not just an economic driver in the region, but it also employs you know, a few dozen people locally uh, full time. So, um, you know, they had a little bit of a rebound there. It was a little longer in Canada. It was almost shut down for two full years instead of one. Um, But coming out of it um, last year, they had great crowds on their anniversary year, you know, broke a lot of records and and, uh, they were able to reinvest uh, some of that success into 2024. And uh, we saw an increase in prize money for contestants you know and in um in those standard events in rodeo there i think there's thirty three thousand dollars added per event um across the two weekends and they introduced breakaway roping uh, for ten thousand dollars added on the second weekend and and five thousand added i believe on the first weekend you know they introduced that into the show there which is going to be you know new and exciting for the girls so um, happy to see that breakaway train keep rolling along, and uh, as well as as well as a few other things that just haven't come to light yet. You know, they uh, they have a lot of exciting things to be announced. And I don't want to ruin ruin all the surprises, but the prize money was a was a great addition for for the Cowboys. So, still ten days, ten performances, BJ. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, last year we had eleven perf- on the anniversary years. We do eleven. We do what we call a midnight rodeo on the Saturday night, but this will be back to the regulars 10 day, uh, 10 performance, uh, over the course of the two weeks. So, and there's, there's some other activities with concerts and Slack and, and, um, things like that in town, obviously, but from the rodeo end of it, there'll be 10 performances over the, the two weekends. 
final question about St. Tiet. Is Brinson Harris, the the entertainer, going to be there? Yeah, Brinson James is uh, going to be a staple there for a little while. He made a long-term commitment to the festival a, a few years ago and uh, continues to work on his uh, on his French accent, and, and we're so pleased to have him in Quebec for that, uh, for that run. We really enjoyed, you know, we had the opportunity to be up there. You guys hosted, Sam and I, and Brinson does a great job, and the whole show is just phenomenal. So to our listeners, uh, now's the time, BJ. They can be getting their tickets, right? They can get them reserved? Yeah, they, the season ticket holders have the first go out, and I think that they go in the next week or two that they get to renew, and then general seating will go on sale, I believe, the first weekend of June. So you can check out the website and their social media and Facebook and Instagram, and it, it gives you an early sign up for it. But yeah, really fortunate uh, to be able to work with such a professional group. They've got uh, the, from the staff to the over 500 volunteers that work on that event year round. They they really have done a tremendous thing up there. Um, you know, when you can put you know three quarters of a million people into a town of 3,500 for 10 days, it's a, it's an exciting event. Yeah, you got to go up there. If you haven't been there, you got to go up and, and experience this. As BJ says, just a great, fun Western festival. Great music, great food, and of course, some of the best rodeo in, in North America. So, so tell us about how Rawhide Rodeo's 2024 season is shaping up. It's coming really quick. I mean, in Canada, the calendar slows down quite a bit in the winter months and allows us to do a a lot of planning but uh, we'll be back early on here in about another few weeks with we'll start with high school rodeos we have a strong commitment uh produce about 10 high school rodeos throughout the you know year for our development of uh, our next generation of cowboys and cowgirls so we usually do them in the shoulder season so early spring and and late fall so we'll get started with those uh inside here in a couple of weeks and it's exciting too because I've got two girls are now in, uh, in junior high school rodeo. So, um, you know, they opened it up to grade five. And so now they get to compete. So it, uh, it adds a whole new, uh, whole new element to it also. Yeah. So we'll do that. And then we have, uh, we have the I carry Canadian finals is actually held to kick off, uh, the season with the IPRA in Canada. So we'll have uh, that in May and, um, and then, we're fortunate to be able to work with the PBR for a couple of weeks, the first week of June. And then we get into our um, meat of our season with the IPRA. Um, I think the first one in Ontario is Father's Day weekend. And the last one we do is, um, I believe, in October, first week of October. So every weekend until then. And, and then we'll have some more high school rodeos and, and that'll be it for the year. So 30 events later. Uh, speaking of the PBR, it's been a while isn't it since they've been in your neck of the woods this year they're going to have three events in ontario one in they're going to start back in london they're going to go to a new venue in kingston and then up to ottawa so they're all three regions that they've been to before and uh, yeah ticket sales are going fantastic for them Um, we sold out a few nights they've added a couple because of that so really excited to uh, have the opportunity to work with JD and Blaine and their crew over there and uh, and be a part of it for the first week and then uh, yeah back to back to work with rodeos and the IPRA. So three events that is very cool and and how can they find and follow and know what's going on Rawhide Rodeo Facebook group page that's still the best way. Yeah, and for the for those individual events like the PBR, I would probably go to PBR Canada's website. They have all the ticketing information listed there, and they can find links through our social media and our webpage to that if they need it. But, um, yeah, tickets are on sale now for all three of those events, so um, I don't know how much longer the tickets will last, but it's going very well. Good, excellent. And And finally, speaking of high school rodeo and the girls now competing, that's where I met you, BJ was high school rodeo you came down into the state yeah it was it was kind of the some of the early beginnings there i met sam you know when i was competing i I started competing in the bull riding you know in my early teens and he was doing an event in ontario and he asked if i had any interest in coming down there and joining it so that kind of was the 
the beginnings and uh, he he uh, took me around all of those high school rodeos and we set them up and tore them down and put on a show and I got a little break to compete along the way and and uh, yeah that was kind of the the humble start and uh, you know I had to go to Pennsylvania at the time that was the closest association to competing and that's where Sam did you know all of his work and uh, with them to develop the next uh, next group of cowboys so it was nice when uh, we had the opportunity in Ontario with uh, with a group well probably a decade ago over that now to uh, to form a high school association in Ontario and and uh, yeah it's kind of uh, it's really grown since then we had you know over 100 different kids compete last year um, you know great scholarship programs that were able to uh, funnel money into those graduating kids so that they can go on to post-secondary so yeah, it's it's funny how it's come full circle and, and really, really happy to be a part of it. What's it feel like to be old enough to have daughters that are now competing in high school rodeo? Well, they're not to high school yet. <laughs> right. they're, uh, they're in the early part, so I'll paraphrase that. But, uh, I, you know, I, I'm just really fortunate. Everything that, uh, you know, has happened and, uh, you know, with rodeo as a vehicle and and those early relationships and, you know, just Sam reaching out with, Hey, you want to go, you know, high school rodeo in the States. I kind of started it all. And, uh, all of the things and relationships and business opportunities after that can kind of be traced back to, uh, you know, to those humble beginnings. So I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have, you know, great family and Michelle, my wife, uh, you know, she runs around and makes sure the girls are ready. Um, you know, for their events at high school rodeo. So it's, it's a lot busier for her. Well, I'm, I'm tickled that uh, you guys are promoting high school rodeo. And to your point, uh, what an impact you're making on a lot of young rodeo athletes. So keep it up. Give us kind of the state of the union, if you will, for IPRA Canada. Yeah, IPRA Canada has exploded in growth in Eastern Canada. It's uh the number of rodeos, I think there's over 50 of them packed into three months. Um, the prize money at it is the richest circuit in the, in the IPRA right now is in Eastern Canada. You know, we've got rodeos every weekend. I think the minimum added is 1,000, and, you know, they've got multiple ones adding 5, 10, 15, and then obviously culminating with St. Tite at the end of the year. So great opportunities for Cowboys. We've seen guys come from Australia and stay the summer and Americans, uh, you know, now that all that stuff with COVID's over, they can come freely back across the border and, and, uh, and they're really going to take advantage of it this year. I think it's going to be a fun circuit to compete in. It's going to be a fun circuit to uh, produce rodeos in and every weekend up there, it's a, there's, three rodeos, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, where a guy can get between them and, uh, and really compete for a lot of prize money. Oh, that is excellent. Great to hear that things are going so well the, for you guys up there with the IPRA. So, BJ, we appreciate all the updates. We, we wish you a great rodeo season and keep up the good work. Yeah, thank you, Doug. Look forward to the next time we chat. And, uh, 2024 season, uh, BJ's picked up a few new rodeos, and I think he is uh, on the right track to try to even better the company than it is now. He, he works hard at it, and he's got a very good mind for promotions, so I, I think it'll just be a great season. I agree. I agree. And, and excited to hear big prize money coming up at the, at St. Teat. Uh, this will be their 61st year. Um, and it sounds like you talk about the Rawhide Rodeo Company. My goodness, he, between high school rodeo and the season, they're busy from May to October, Sam. I don't know if they have any weekends off. And the other thing that stood out for me, high school, his daughters are in fifth grade moving into high school rodeo. Talk about full circle. <laughs> yeah it's full circle so it you know when bj came down and i started taking him to high school rodeos because his mom asked me if i would watch him and take him because he was going to go anyway 
Uh, she didn't know the burden she put on my shoulders. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's on yours, BJ. Yeah, that's right. You're going to have to worry about the boys yeah. later on here. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah, gonna, yeah. But uh, I, I'm sure it'll be okay because BJ will know all the tricks. He so knows all cool. the tricks. He helped write the book, right? He helped write the book. And he's a pretty yeah. fast learner. He's a pretty fast learner. Um, yes, he is. And then finally, Sam, we can't end uh, can't end the show without asking about Colton. How is he? Where is he? Uh, what's on? What's what do you plan to do here? Well, I'm so excited. Uh, I'm in. Colton's going to be in Montgomery, Alabama tomorrow, and I'll get to go see him. And it, it just seems like forever. I just uh, miss it. I, I know he's out on the road doing what he loves, and yeah, I, you know, I had him every day for so many years, and now I only get to see him once in a great while, but tomorrow's going to be the day, so I'm very excited. You bet. You bet. Excited. Uh, going to look forward to how he does, and and just, just uh, we're, we're interested in how he's, how, how he's living life so large, you know, out there on the road, as you said. Interested in what he's seeing, what he's experiencing. So good luck to Colton uh, in Montgomery. Yeah, I hope he does well. Uh, then he's leaving and going to one Texas Friday, so we won't have a lot of time to visit, but uh, at least I get to see him and cheer him on. You bet. You bet. No, I'm excited for you. Uh, and then you're headed back to New York? Yeah, I'm going to go back to New York probably after Colton leaves, and uh, i got some business to take care of up there. Yeah, so New York and then, uh, then uh, Tennessee. Right, you're going to come down for that. You've got a wedding in Texas. You're going to go to, and then, and then finally um, back here for for Louisville. We've got a heck of a busy next few months. Yes, we do. It it, it should be fun. Yeah, you know, it, it should be fun. So, like the next six weeks, we're going to be doing a lot with this podcast and. Uh, It'll, it'll be very interesting. Absolutely. And and what I'm thinking is while we're driving, we could be recording an episode while we're driving. I'm well, driving, that... you're riding, you're you're driving, I'm riding. We record a po- podcast going down the road so we can say BTC is truly on the road. There you go. I'm okay. up for it. Any, okay. Anything I any talking I can do while I'm driving, <laughs> that, that's much better for me than sitting in the kitchen table talking. Keeps you awake. All right, yes. Sam. Well, any any last words before we say goodbye? Well, I'd just like to thank the listeners and uh, hope Colton and Dalen do well this week. Uh, just can't wait to see them and uh, take it all in. Absolutely. Perfect, perfect. All right. We hope that you enjoyed Sam and my update. If you do, please share it with your friends to make your listening easier. You can find us on Spotify and Apple podcasts. Just simply search for beyond the shoots and follow us. We also have a Facebook page beyond the shoots. So please find us, like us, follow us. We have lots of great pictures and reels that go along with these episodes. Tons of content. So that is Beyond the Shoots, our Facebook page. Leave us your comments. Sam, there's been some great comments coming. I love the discussion. We love getting these. Uh, It helps us frame where we're going to be headed, who we want to go see. And speaking of the Facebook pages, check out the New York State Rodeo Museum Facebook group page. And we'd like to say thank you to our sponsor, Parasite Systems, for their support with our podcast. Parasite System is a push-button parasitic diagnostic system for pasture animals, your horses, your cattle, your goats, your sheep, and your chickens. And now for your companion animals, the dogs and the cats, you can find them at Parasite Systems. And Sam, we've got a coupon for 50% off your test kits. You can do your testing via the mail. They send it, you send it in. Use BTC023. You can get registered on Poof to Proof. No, I didn't say that right. Poop to Proof, Sam. Poop to Proof.com. Am I saying that right? (laughs) I'm glad it's you saying it, not me. So, yeah, you said it right, Dad. We'll leave it at that. Okay, Poop to Proof. Uh, and use your coupon code BTC023. Now is the perfect time to be testing as we head into the warmer months. And this is Beyond the Shoots. Until next time, this is 
Sam Swearingen. Doug Sidcox. Thank you for listening.